There was no doubt about it in those days. We put uh, our husbands' uh, careers first. So much has happened in, in the lives of women. I took the Harvard Radcliffe program in business administration one year course after Basser. But there were very few opportunities. We had to learn the mm -hmm. hard way. We did not have what girls have today, or young women, and that is a ready-made atmosphere in mm -hmm. which they are welcomed. Mm -hmm. We had to fight. Could I just still also say how far we've gone? When I was in graduate school at Harvard, I won a big fat fellowship to the National Gallery in Washington. Uh, I was invited down to Washington to speak to the then director of the National Gallery. Now, sit down, my dear, said this very urbane gentleman. He said, I asked you to come all the way down here from Cambridge in order to tell you that you really did win this. You certainly are more meritorious than the runners-up. But the person who would be second to you, he's thinking of getting married. And of course, that may mean that he will have children. And that will mean that he uh, has to support a family. Mm. So you will understand if we give the fellowship to <gasps> him rather than to uh. Now what I find shocking about this story is that I accepted it and I went mm. home again. I, it would never have occurred to me to make a fuss. We would be the only ones who would suffer from it. Mm -hmm. I would have thought that it would have been low uh, to respond in any other way. Whereas the thing that is so troglodytic about it, you know, it's as mm. though it's hard to imagine that that was our world. I applied to law school. They told me they didn't really want me. They said, and of course, the fact that they even said it to me was outrageous, was that I had four kids and I would be taking the spot of a man oh. who would no doubt practice law and that I was just, how could I practice law with four kids and no husband? Mm. Expectations of of what women were to, you could work in hospital administration, you could work in retailing, uh, and a few other areas, uh, but you just, the opportunity wasn't there. I got my first job uh, from the Vocational Bureau, the dear, I think her name was Miss Johnson. I, she, uh, she knew that my husband was at Columbia, and she uh, was able to get me a, an interview in the registrar's office at Columbia and also allowed me to have a very low tuition at the Russian Institute there. And she referred to it as my PhD, putting hubby through. Believe it or not, I accepted that and I didn't ever question it. And so essentially what I did without even thinking was to uh, support his career at the expense of my own. Did you find any discrimination in the work world uh, because of being a woman? No, oh, yeah. It was harder to to make your mark, as it were. It was certainly easier in retailing, but uh, very difficult in some other fields. I had a very short-term job at Merrill Lynch, and the minute they thought you were pregnant, you were fired. I mean, there was oh. no ifs, ands, and buts. They didn't want pregnant women in their offices. I was pregnant with my first child when I graduated from law school. Mm -hmm. Nobody would then hire a pregnant woman uh, because they weren't even hiring women, let alone mm. pregnant women. And they would say they weren't. In those days, they didn't give women an opportunity to be a reporter. You were uh, a researcher. They put me in charge of the sort of feminine things, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the art, the fashion, and the movies, mm -hmm. but then occasionally they'd have to send me out to deal with labor union organizers for the lignite coal strike. So I looked up the vocabulary, got myself ready, and uh, the man who was I was interviewing was quite offended that time would send a, woman. a young woman mm -hmm. with a beehive hairdo. Mm -hmm. uh, I was able to deal with him. And I think Vassar prepared me for that. Mm -hmm. I said, research at Merrill Lynch, but I could only look at retail stocks and meet, uh, things of that nature that were female oriented. Mm -hmm. If you had said you wanted to, to do oil stocks or financial services, they'd have looked at you as if you were stark raving mad. Mm -hmm. This is interesting for what happens to women. I I had planned to work as a translator all fall for David McCullough, but he came to me and he said, I've run out of money, 
I need you to do it, but would you do it as a volunteer? Mm -hmm. And without any hesitation, I said no. Mm -hmm. And that was a very important decision that we <laughs> girls and women had given away much too much, and I couldn't afford to do that anyway. Mm -hmm. I was used to dealing with men even when I was with Dean Witter because I was one of three portfolio analysts that used to go to the portfolio meetings mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and the analyst luncheons. And even then, at Dean Witter in San Francisco, I used to have to go up the back kitchen elevator with the other girls to the luncheon room. I got a job at Simpson Thatcher and Bar doing a file search on a big antitrust case. A menial job, the kind of thing that a paralegal does today. But I was very happy to get such a job because I knew the firms weren't hiring women at all. Also, I had my baby at home. I was nursing my baby. I, I was in a big law firm. I was very accepting of all of the male chauvinist jokes and the male chauvinist stories and the, all of the male orientation. I was very accepting. I was very malleable. I felt privileged to be where I was. And worse, I, I really was groomed to discriminate against women because that was the socialization that I was there because I was special, not because, I mean, it was as if um, being a woman is definitely a big negative, but I was an exception, mm -hmm. and that's why I was there. That, I realized later, was the socialization. Mm -hmm. I must have visited, oh, I don't know how many bankers and mortgage bankers, and, and finally, it was actually through my Rotary Club, one of the Rotarians found a thrift company that would take on additional risk and they charged me 13 mm percent -hmm. but at least I got the money and mm -hmm. I put the building up I got my construction done it was really difficult but was your husband deceased at that time? yes yes he was deceased oh, okay. but you had the business going with your husband I, I had the business going with my husband but you know the perception was is that it's a man's business it's mm -hmm. a man's job it's a man's world most of my customers are men mm -hmm. okay it, I'm a woman, you're going to give me the loan, I'm going to get this job done, and yes, my husband is not here, but I'm going to do it. Now, I had customers even that said, well, you know, Willie, uh, we like you, think you're a nice woman and everything, but we're going to take our sales and take them elsewhere because we, mm -hmm. just because, but it just pushed me harder. Some other instance which is interesting for um, us and what's happened to us as a class from the mid-50s. When I went to the French American Foundation, I learned a month later that the same job had been offered to a man for twice <gasps> that salary. Mm. I was devastated, but I thought, I don't want to lose this job. Uh, what do I do? I went to the chairman of the board. The very next day, I got a call. They gave me a 50% rate. Mm -hmm. did acknowledge yes. that they had obviously tried to get me on the cheap. Uh, did you ever have any other encounters with prejudice because of your Oh, status? definitely. I mean, maybe we had to go out and prove ourselves. Now, I tried to get a job one summer at the largest law firm in Syracuse. They laughed at me, and they were really quite rude. Mm -hmm. So they hadn't yet learned even how to be civil towards a woman mm -hmm. who might be serious about mm -hmm. practicing law. Well, I was brought up to be a certain kind of culture geisha. I had to learn to have an identity on my own. This, the pressures were yeah. to try to make me feel special. Mm -hmm. And these were very subtle, and I'm sure the men didn't realize that. But they did not have an interest in having more women. Or, and that's the era uh, when women were really patronized mm -hmm. and didn't know it. I don't want to be in any thrall to anyone. I am my own person and I'm going to earn my own living and I gave up alimony in terms of gaining my own independence, my own self-respect as a professional woman. It was a great move. One of the things that I'm hoping somehow or other will come out at this reunion, the young women in our class who went beyond, who took mm -hmm. that leap. Yeah. Uh, and there are lots of them. Yes, yeah. I think there really are a lot. Sure. And to celebrate uh, that as well as those of us who were more traditional. I'm going to interrupt for a second.